beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed First John 5 verse 3. The Bible gives us another very clear test. First John 5 verse 3. Oh, Shibakatalabakura Sidabaladabai. Somebody is changing in the name of Jesus. First John 5 verse 3. Can we read together? I want to read. For this is the what? Love of God that we keep his commandments. And the Bible says his commandments are not burdensome. The word grievous, there is the word burdensome. Hallelujah. He said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. His commands are not burdensome. Please don't let anybody fool you. There are laws in the kingdom. I've said it. These things are, it's not the law of Old Testament. It, they are the laws that give structure to the kingdom. The laws of the kingdom are like the skeleton in a man's body. That's what gives form and structure in the kingdom. Hallelujah. You must have the fear of the Lord. You must have the spirit of reverence. So I can look at your life and know whether you fear God or not. Hallelujah. Don't say, ah, I, I fear God by faith. Even him, he knows. Uh-uh. There are exact parameters. You're not walking in his ways. You're not living by his principles and his value system. Don't tell me you fear God. When you can, you don't know the difference between church and a disco hall. Between, well, believers don't in this side of God's kingdom are not so involved in all those things again. But there are all kinds of things we do. And we believe. Listen, please and please. And I, I, don't, I don't mean this. I don't mean this to... Um, to discredit ministers and ministries in the body of Christ but I've said it again and again that the message of grace is only an accurate message if it is accepted as part of the full gospel are you getting my point the whole gospel must be preached there is a level to which the grace message is taught and just tells you oh don't concentrate on your love for God concentrate on his love for you and concentrate on all of that and you know anything will happen everything has been done wonderful what then is the reward of obedience why then is there hellfire if everything is like that god must apologize to ananias and Sapphira. don't you think so was it not in the new testament they fell down and they died why couldn't he have at least given them a chance maybe they will repent later on how could a loving God make the lake of fire? Hallelujah. Seven churches in, in the book of Revelation. 
when God began to talk to them, he was focused on their works. I know your works. I know your works. Is, is that in your Bible? Brothers and sisters, be careful. Hallelujah. Honor the body of Christ, but you must realize that if the gospel is not taught holistically, it can lead people into error. There are a lot of people missing it and dancing around in ignorance, believing. Are you getting my point? Let me share with you something that will surprise you. D.L. Moody. Many of you have read about him, right? D.L. Moody was a mighty evangelist of God. And he came and preached for decades. When D.L. Moody died, sir, after 10 years, they decided to do a, like a little census to follow up the converts of D.L. Moody. Please listen. This is, this is not an exaggerated statement. Hallelujah. And they found out that only one out of 10 converts of D.L. Moody were still standing in the faith. Are you getting what I'm saying? I respect him. I honor him. Hallelujah. It was, look at such a great man. After laboring, they found out that most of the people who were coming out in his meetings, only one out of ten remained safe and were still in the faith. We're not talking of people who built ministries. Those who were still eligible to make heaven according to the, the standards of the word of God. What happened to all the emotionalism that happened in those meetings? And then they took the same census for a man called Charles G. Finney. Hallelujah. And they found out most of the great men you see, most of the great men, they were products of that man's revival. When you got born again in his meeting, you hear everything that keeps you in the faith for life. Something is wrong with our gospel. It's not incorrect, but it's not complete either. There are missing sides that we must couple together. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. God is a loving God, but God is also a just God. Hallelujah. What I have just told you now is called the gospel of the kingdom. It switches dimension and lets you know that Jesus is not only a savior, but he is a king. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We have allowed people to do all kinds of things. There are believers today who have all kinds of pornography on their phones, their laptops. They watch it and the moment the Holy Spirit wants to convict them, they say, I'll never feel guilty. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Tomorrow they go back and do it again. Somebody goes, come on now, let's, let, uh, you, know, you trust me, I love you too much not to tell you the truth. People sleep around and do all kinds of things. And yes, God is a forgiving God. There is a difference between a challenge in your life and the spirit of rebellion at work in your life. Rebellion is a perpetual, willful, continual state of violating God's principles. And the consequence is hellfire. I don't care whether you're a pastor or whether you are whatever. Please take what I'm saying seriously. Hallelujah. Paul, the one who brought what we know as the Pauline epistles. If his gospel was so pleasant, I have a question. Why did they stone him? Have you ever wondered? Why did they stone him? What did he say that got the people angry? That they stoned him? Hallelujah. Why did they behead James? It wasn't just because they were angry at them. There was a content that we are missing today. And that's the reason. I'm telling you, this is why many believers are not powerful. Anything comes and just throws us down. Because there is a content of the gospel that needs to be re-examined. Now don't carry your zeal and go and listen to every message a man of God is preaching and you get up and say I know better that's foolishness I hope you understand that God is granting us maturity but I am just telling you that 
as much as the grace message is good it only makes sense when it is incorporated as the whole truth there are many other components of the kingdom what's the formula for water the chemical formula for water is what h2o is that true just add one more um what now of oxygen it becomes h2o2 what is that are you seeing that same thing that can be water now for adding something wrong it can become poison at once and kill you everything in the kingdom must be taught within the dimensions that jesus kept them hallelujah i'm saying this because there are people who will be listening to these teachings all across and some of you god is going to trust you with ministries you will have your churches please don't be afraid of being criticized you must stand and teach the truth are you getting me i remember somebody who sent me a text one day and said please um i have a problem with you praying for people how do believers just manifest and you say you are casting out demons out of them is that really true I just sent the person my text i said i love you we see from different perspectives in the kingdom and god will help us we operate from the perspectives that we see and that was all i said praise the lord ay, ay, ay. time is a revealer i hope you know that time time there are some things you should never talk about time just allow time to pass Time. That's why sometimes you say something and God keeps quiet. Hmm. People just say, you will never make it. And God never responds. And you are saying, God, God has already spoken. Time is a language in this realm. It can speak so loud. Brothers and sisters, when we started this thing, you are seeing. I cannot tell you how many people criticize the things we are doing. They say it won't last. I, 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 I saw many zealous pastors. Those of you who were around those times, you know that it was madness in this side of God's kingdom. Everybody was doing everything. People carrying briefcases and ladies all around them. I am this, I am that. People scrounging to go for radio programs and all of that. And some of us look like fools. But he has chosen the foolish things. With everything, with everything, we will shout for your glory. With everything, with everything, we will shout for your praise. Oh. I mislead you and I teach you error the God of heaven is going to judge me even if I don't love you I love my destiny are you getting what I'm saying the Bible says ask for the ancient paths and walk in it I'll never forget one minister I've, I've shared with you the story that guy's ministry was grounded things were tight there were all kinds of demonic things but that guy would never accept that there was a demonic problem no no there's nothing wrong nothing was happening and one day he summoned courage to come for counseling and so as soon as he entered i saw a spirit enter with him and he just came just sat down and then he was telling me all kinds of things things are not exactly working this and that i said my brother i need to pray for you ah guy felt embarrassed his, his ego you know and you know we get deceived because you touch somebody and the person falls you just believe that it means god has finished working on you is that true and i was going to pray for the person the last thing he could remember was that he got down on his knees right scattered the place scattered the room and i i i said look at this is the same person who will argue and maybe insult me and write articles and write all kinds of things 
this guy got up went back to his ministry and boom goodness how a man can sit down in ignorance for years whereas in two minutes of humility your destiny can open up how how believers in the body have sat down in ignorance their salvation is closer to them that they can ever see but it takes meekness to receive the word you can be dying there are families that can be dying in situations whereas the arm of the lord is not short that it can say what is keeping you from entering the next level of your life could it be that that brokenness there is nothing wrong to accept that oh this is what i used to believe but i've seen clearer now Lord, help your body in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's hurry up. We're still talking about how to secure favor with God. We have to rush. Number two, you must have faith in God. You want to secure the favor of the save, the um, the favor of God in your life. Remember, we're talking about favor with God. You must have faith in God. It's very important. James 5 verse 4 tells us this is the victory that overcomes. And it says, even our faith. You know what it means to have faith in God? I'm going to explain it to you. The first revelation of having faith in God is to trust Him. It's as simple as that. Trust Him. Don't complicate your faith experience. It means trust Him. Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Verse 6 says, In all your ways, not some, in all your ways, recognize Him, acknowledge Him, and His reward for your acknowledging Him is that He will make straight your path. And then verse 7 says, It's a warning. It says, Be not wise in your own understanding. Fear the Lord and turn away from you. Be not wise. In your own understanding that means you can feel you are wise in your own understanding but he said fear the Lord and that fear of the Lord will make you turn away from evil hallelujah Hebrews 11 verse 6 tells us that without faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh unto God must believe that he is in other words that he exists and then number two that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him it takes faith hallelujah it takes faith in god it takes faith in god very important you must trust in the lord psalms 125 verse 1 it said they that trust in the lord shall be like mount zion that cannot be shaken hallelujah very important they that trust in the lord when you have faith in god it gives you stability through all of the boisterous winds that blow around our lives where are we okay they that trust in the lord shall be as mount zion which shall not be removed or shaken but abides forever do you trust in the lord what is faith first and foremost let me tell you faith is never faith until it can be seen or heard let me shock you right now faith is never faith until it can be seen or heard faith comes from the greek word pistis hallelujah what that means is your faith is your persuasion or conviction plus the corresponding action you take based on that conviction are you getting my point now if you have not acted on faith it's called belief it's not called faith are you getting me belief is just your persuasion when you act based on that belief it becomes faith so the bible says have faith in god become persuaded so much in the character of god that you take steps based on that conviction
So the equation of faith is revelation plus conviction or persuasion then plus corresponding action. Write it and never forget because faith comes when you hear the word of God. So it starts with revelation. Then that revelation brings conviction or persuasion. You are convinced about this reality you just heard about. Convinced enough to take steps. Then the Bible calls that without the action component is called belief what many people are doing that they call faith is belief that means not acting on the word of God is the clearest proof that you don't trust God not acting on the word of God is the clearest proof biblically that you do not trust God So many people hear the word of God and we claim to be convinced. Let me tell you, in this life, the moment you are convinced about a thing, action is almost automatic. Hallelujah. A guy sees a lady and thinks he likes her and he keeps nursing that persuasion until it pushes him to say, Sister, please, after Koinonia, I'll be at this door. Will you mind passing there? That's action. Three guys saw the lady and said, wow, nice lady. I saw the way, you know, she's fine and she likes God praying. It's nice when a fine lady is praying. And that's all. He stopped and they all moved. But he was convinced and he said, look, I'm going to take a step further. Right? And he meets the lady. And then they get married. What is that? Action. Whereas there is another brother who kept saying, me, even me, God knows from the depths of my heart, this is my wife. And you watch somebody complete the equation and carry your wife. I just spoke about marriage. Some of you have woken up now. Ah! Brothers, you need this message before you carry any man's daughter to the altar. Hmm. That statement you make at the altar is so implicating. It will take a long time for you to see the the significance of that vow don't let your tithe deceive you you are standing they are just talking will you do this everybody are just telling everybody i'm getting married after the marriage the robber will hit the road your eye will clear my friend jimmy says love is blind but marriage will open your eyes praise god so let's hurry up number three i'm going to shock you now you want to secure favor with God? The third principle is the tithe. T-I-T-H-E. Ah. How many of us have been taught in our churches and our different groups that tithe helps you to secure favor with God? Even those who have taught about tithe just preach about it because there are bills that need to be paid and they say you need to pay your tithe. If you don't pay your tithe, you don't pay your tithe and see whether God will bless you. And you see the anger with which the man is preaching and God tells you, please, please. Pay this tithe. Every church, every ministry, their prosperity is dependent on their own obedience to the principles of the kingdom. My prosperity as a minister of the gospel is not dependent on koinonia people. Ah, that would have been a terrible way to live. I would have been frowning at you for every week. What did you drop last week? You know? There are many men of God who are burdens to their congregations because they do not realize that their prosperity is tied to their own personal obedience. Can I be sincere with you? many men of God don't tithe. Hallelujah. Many men of God don't tithe. They teach tithing. Do you know how long it took me as a man of God to be consistent in tithing? I want to be sincere with you. You know I fear God and I honor God. When I saw how difficult it was to tithe with all the fear that I had for God, I said, man, that means many people, somebody is lying somewhere in this equation. It takes the giving grace to come upon your life. One, two, it takes you designing a system to make your tithing efficient. 
Are you getting my point? You don't tithe just... No, 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 no. The first thing I want you to understand about tithing is that tithing is not a debt you are paying. Many people come before God with tithe. Help me with one, one of these envelopes. And they, they bring the tithe. Thank you. Don't worry. They bring the tithe and they just stand frowning. Okay, God, please, so you will not harass me. Take. And once they pray, they say it's blessed. The way you just drop this in the offering basket. Your tithe secures favor with God. You want to be on God's side, brothers and sisters. Not being on God's side is disastrous. It's not just about finances. There is a spirit called the devourer. It is alive and active in the earth. Hallelujah. I must talk about this. Your tithe is not the payment of a debt because everything we owe belongs to God. Your tithe is an acknowledgement. It's a documentation of your gratitude. You're saying, Lord, in obedience to you and for your faithfulness, I bring 10%. Brothers and sisters, hear me. Let me kneel down. Look at me. I'm kneeling down. Snap me so that you'll see it on, on the... Don't, I'm dummy with your phone. I'm pleading with you in the name of the Lord God. If you love God, I beg you in the name of Jesus Christ. Be consistent in your time. See, I'm getting down on my knees and I'm begging you. Ah, you've been snapping, oh, Joe. <laughs> okay, let me just hands up so that you know that I'm kneeling down. Be faithful. Don't think tithing is a gimmick by a preacher. I can tell you this. Ask the financial department. By the grace of God as a ministry, we do not owe God one naira. I don't care what collection is made for what. The tithe of God. Before anything happens. You really think we are running this ministry from... The, look, you know what you are dropping in the offering basket. At least you don't know your neighbor's own. You know your own run ministry with things people are throwing. No. There is a mystery of divine supply. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You must believe this. I was sharing some of the testimonies with Pastor Williams. Benefits of tithing. I remember one time we were just praying and, and trusting God. There were things here and there to and all of that and we were just saying oh lord we thank you because we are tight as we are faithful till today i was sharing with you pastor till today we do not know the person we just got an alert 1.5 million by an unknown person we do not know into the ministry account whereas that's somebody's neighbor somebody who is collecting fifty thousand. how much is his salary that calculated for more than one year for being faithful in time I think I was talking to the protocol department. They went to purchase something in Abuja. And then I was talking to them. The mixer. We just got a better mixer. Very good one. And then I, I was talking to them. I think it was someone on my birthday. Pastor. Someone just, right? Yes. And the person just said, ah, they just paid some money for their family that they were hoping, you know, 3.4 million naira. And the person just said oh well thank god for all the words you are speaking the things you are teaching us and was just sending the tithe and all of that let me tell you when you see what we are doing because i know many of you sit and wonder how do these people really get money yes god is faithful but what is the one plus one of it let me tell you the one plus one of it is what i'm teaching you here the tithe if you are not a faithful tither god is not authorized to bless you Stop wasting your time in praying and fasting for wealth. If you are not a titan, I want you to know the devourer will stand and stare at your face. If you like, put a Bible on your head. Prayer is not the seed for financial breakthrough. Prayer is the seed for fellowship with the spirit and spiritual awakening and the presence of God and activating the anointing, not prosperity. Your time, your giving are the seeds for increase. Many people who want to be blessed will argue this thing. And you ask the person, how much do you have? How much has entered your hand that you are arguing? You are saying it's not correct. 
It's a terrible thing when you don't have results and you are still arguing. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. When you pay your tithe, you're securing favor with God. Please and please and please teach this to anyone you love and make up your mind from today. Your tithe is a tenth portion, one tenth of your income that secures open heavens, favor with God. Tithe because it guarantees God's continuous favor in your life. Oh, I don't want to be outside of the favor of God. It's dangerous. It's a risky position. It's like being face to face with a lion. Imagine how many devils of darkness will want on their own to destroy my life. I found a place of refuge. I found a way of walking under an open heavens. Do you know the wickedness? The arrows that fly by day. The noisome pestilence. Do you know how many people want to see your downfall? If there is no spiritual way of keeping yourself standing, you will fall like a leaf. Are you getting what I'm saying? How many people use all their monies for sickness? All their monies for no, no open heavens. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I make up my mind to be faithful in tithing. Say it again in the name of Jesus. See, the truth is many of us are not consistent. Our tithing life is up, down, up, down. That's why today it looks like some doors of favor open up. And then tomorrow, it's not God's fault. J.C. Penny, many of you have heard about him. J.C. Penny, one of the multi-billionaires who love God. He was tithing and at a point something happened and he said he wanted to experiment with God. He stopped tithing. That was how his business just was died like that to a point that he was almost crashing. And he said, wow. And he started tithing. And that was how he, he got himself back. You better believe what I'm telling you. Many of our parents do not tithe from their salaries. They are collecting 150,000 yet they cannot afford 5,000. You ask them for 5,000 they will almost kill you. Because a devourer has eaten everything. In one day, two tires just patch. And all the money has gone. Just when you are coming, something happens. Arrows that fly by day. And they now look and they say, sorry, you need, you need this and that. You will be spent and all the money goes. Then, the moment the money goes, the person gets well by himself. The devourer. And you are praying and fasting and conducting night vigils and running around your parlor in the night rather than obey that is better than sacrifice many of us can prefer to run marathon prayers from 11 to 6 to try to solve something that faithfulness in tithing many of our fathers have brought predicaments upon the family because they are not faithful in tithing a solid building a solid structure small rain just comes and washes everything just when they wanted to finish the thing back to square one there are even those that physical money disappears. Have you had that story? Somebody keeps one million, he comes back and finds 780,000. Someone came for counseling. I've never had that thing. The woman said, Rats eat her money. No, serious. I'm, I'm not joking. I'm not joking at all. Rats. You come in the morning and you see pieces of what sort of devil? Tithing. I think it was either Paul Lynch or, or, or Bishop David Oyeriko that shared something that some armed robbers came and they were going to, I think, um, destroy a woman or capture one family. And the woman shouted, she took her tight booklet, lifted it up and dropped it on the ground and said, God, watch the people match this booklet and come and touch me. At once, confusion came on the people. They were afraid and that was how they left. Brothers and sisters, what you do not believe will not work for you. 
Oh, I believe the word of God. I'm that minister of the gospel that believes every word of Jesus. Are you getting blessed? Leviticus 27 verse 30. Let's finish up on the issue of tithe very quickly. Leviticus 27 verse 30. Let me show you how the devil has been cheating many of us. Tithe heals you from greed. Everyone, let's read. One, two, read. Is the Lord's and it is holy unto God. So when I take my tithe, I say, Lord, I'm documenting my gratitude. I honor you. I thank you. How many of our parents receive some money? Maybe one money that is spending, it just comes in. Seven million. And they just calculate use calculator 700,000 me go and give that man of God I'm not stupid Abba 700,000 and you see the person arguing and within three weeks he has spent over one million naira on his health and robbers will come and put a gun and say we saw through the jazz that we use that there's seven million in this I say no it's only four no, now slap you say truly it's, it's seven where is it he said that's it here take it take it and preserve my life whereas the tithe of it. Are you seeing how many of our family members put us in trouble? I say this, many of us keep wondering, why is my father working? Why is my mother working? The truth is that they are all working. They've never been driven from job, but not even a house to build. The mysteries of the kingdom. There is no favor. The heavens are closed. So many believers operating under close heaven. There are many ministries. They are so tight. No supplies. They beg for everything. Squeeze people. Put people, workers and all of that under every kind of pressure. Because the man of God is not tithing. The people are not tithing. The ministry is not tithing. Dr. Mike Mudok was sharing and he said there was a time the finance of his ministry was going down. He was going down so bad and he checked and then he called the finance department. He said something is wrong. We are not doing something right. What is wrong? Hallelujah. And the financial secretary said, well, sir, um, for about three months now, we've not been paying tight because the bills are enormous. And honestly, if we are to pay tight, you may, we may shut you down from TV and all of that. And my mother said, because of that, you stop paying the tithe. That means we are going to crash to zero. The day we stop paying tithe as a ministry, I give you one to two months. It will never happen. That's why I have the confidence to say it. Maybe one day you come and you just see no fuel for generator or no chairs. Ah! No. As surely as the God of heaven lives, we have created a system that does not depend on our personal emotions again. Is someone learning something? Is your heavens open? Pastor, is your heaven open? Over your family. There are many people who do not tithe. They pay school fees. 250 naira. The, the child, brilliant boy, is coming back with one dull result. 0, 0, 0, 0, 39, 41. That's the average. What is happening? All kinds of witchcraft activities flying freely because the heavens are closed. Are you getting blessed with what I'm saying? You want to secure favor with God? You must be faithful. We've not talked about favor with men, no. And that's really where I want to dwell tonight. That's why I'm rushing. I'm not teaching on finances, so I'll stop here for you. We're going to pray just in one minute before we continue. Many of us need to repent because the financial stress in our family is not because of the job. It's not. It's not because they didn't promote your father. I'm telling you the truth. If we don't take responsibility, we will keep giving. It's easy to blame people for our financial predicament. Are you getting my point? It's so easy. If that they promoted me, 
I would have been collecting 200,000 now instead of 150. My life would have been better. So wrong. So wrong. You collect 1 million under a closed heaven and you will see the way the devil will make a caricature of your life. Lift up your voice in one minute and say, Lord, I repent. Be sincere with yourself. Some of us need to pray on behalf of our families. Please be sincere. Lord, I've not been faithful. Tithing. I don't know what it is, oh God, but I find out that it's so hard. I've not had the revelation. I'm not yet convinced. I think it's a gimmick by a man of God or a ministry. I think it's just a gimmick. Koinonia is trying to squeeze out money from me. No. Go ahead and pray. Because there are many of us, no matter how many miracle services you come, I'm telling you, the heavens are closed. The heavens are closed. There is no favor with God. That's why the doors that were opened before, they are not even open again. Be sincere with yourself. There were strange manifestations of favor from God. They are not even there again. Your shop that used to sell, nothing is selling again because you think you don't tithe for your business. Now the heavens are closed. Look at many of our parents. You buy a new gadget, you bring the machine, everything breaks down. This is the devourer, brothers and sisters. Let's take responsibility tonight and say, Lord, we cry for help. The finance of families are finished because of paying for drugs and sicknesses. Paying for damaged cars. Paying for all kinds of things. Pray and say, Lord, I want your favor. From tonight, I repent. I receive the giving grace to be a delight some tighter. I realize that this is the key. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you read. I don't care what your level of anointing is. I don't care how hardened your heart is. If you want to experience favor with God, I'm telling you one of the keys is you must be a consistent tighter. You must design a system around your life. If there are needs in your life, that's the more, that's, that's the more reason to tie. Don't say the needs are too much. Man of God is because you don't know. I have so much needs. I must do this and that. Tight your way out of that trouble. Tight your way out of that trouble. Eating your tight will only get you deeper. I promise you, you can apply every business principle you know. Fail to tight and watch the devourer scatter your life and your family. But you'll be faithful towards tithing and watch God turn any situation around. It doesn't take time. Commit God into your life. Anything God is involved in must succeed. Many of us, God is not committed in the affairs of our lives. I don't want to know what you are going through now. Tight your way out of it. Secure the favor of the Almighty. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please let me challenge you. Create a system. If you do internet banking, you can have the account details of the ministry or whatever. Or if it is here, you type the, the, the ministry's account details are available to it. If you do internet banking, transfer it immediately. Otherwise, buy envelopes. Buy envelopes. I always have a stash of envelopes. Praise God. The treasurer is here. We created a system. I don't even see the tithe. As it is counted, we take it and, 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 and sow it to the appropriate ministry. Brothers and sisters, please listen to me. Are you not tired of what you have seen your loved ones go through? Didn't they go to school? Didn't they get all the degrees? Look at everything. See how helpless people are. Because they know not, neither will they understand. And the Bible says they grow in darkness and the earth is out of course. 
Let's finish the last part. How do you activate and secure favor with men? I must talk about this. Spoke about three things right now. To secure favor with God. That number one, you must have the fear of God. The fear of the Lord. Number two, you must have faith in God. You must trust Him. Number three, you must be a consistent titan. But when it comes to finding favor with men, the rule is different. If you have been sleeping, this is the time to wake up. I believe with all my heart that your destiny depends on this revelation I'm sharing tonight. Daniel chapter 1. Open our eyes, O oh God. Daniel chapter 1. Help us. Grant us grace. Someone is walking in undeniable realms of favor after today. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to share with you something very powerful. How do you secure favor with men? In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. Verse 2. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hands with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar, to the house of his God. And he brought the vessels into the treasure of his God. Verse 3. And the king, listen now, spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of the eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel. So the king is inviting some people to stand before the king. Hallelujah. And the kings, and of the king's seed, and of the princes. Verse 4. Everyone read. One, two, read. Children in whom was no blemish, but well favored, and skillful in all wisdom, and cunning in knowledge, and understanding science, and such as had ability, take note, in them to stand in the king's palace. It takes an ability. Are you seeing that? He said those who have what? Ability to stand in the king's palace. And whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. Let's stop there. Look up. There is a mystery to securing favor with men. And I want you to get this very straight. There were many people who were captured but notice what Nebuchadnezzar said. He said there are a kind of people I want. The king that we captured now. I want all the people that walked in his palace. Because they have been trained according to the life of royalty. Bring them. I want certain choice guys that came from Israel. There were certain things that the eunuchs were looking at. Brothers and sisters. There is a price to secure favor with men. Can I tell you something? Favor is the currency to get money. Think about what I said very carefully. Favor is the currency to get money. Write this down, please. The ultimate key to entering the realm of favor with men. Never forget this for as long as you live. If you pay attention to this, we will celebrate together as the great ones in the future. But you neglect this, you will be part of those quarreling, those who will be the great ones. Listen. The ultimate key to entering the realm of favor with men is to possess the ability to provide solutions and solve their problems. Write it down. The ultimate key, I'll say it again, to entering the realm of favor with men is to possess the ability to solve their problems and provide solutions. Oh, Shiva, 
Write this down. Solve problems, then write three ellipses. Provide solutions. Let's discuss this briefly. When I solve this, we'll tie it up by showing you how God announces men in the kingdom. The ultimate key, brothers and sisters, hear me. Every man in scripture who became great, became great because he was favored. He found favor with men. And every man who found favor with men had something to exchange for that favor. Is someone getting what I'm saying? Joseph would have died in the prison if he never had the ability to interpret dreams. Daniel would never rise to reign in a strange land through the dispensation of three kings if he had no ability to solve problems. I say this all the time and some of us neglect it write that word down ability ability this is your key to finding favor with men and entering the realm of greatness gender notwithstanding background notwithstanding age notwithstanding nationality notwithstanding Hallelujah. Until you solve a problem, you remain insignificant and unnoticed. If you are not providing solution, brothers and sisters, nobody needs you. The world is so desperate for solutions, they will only run towards the direction of those who are solving problems. The greater problems you solve, the greater you become magnetic. Please understand this. If you think you will, people will invite you into their presence just because they like you or because you are a Christian, you are dreaming. Wake up. Hello? <laughs> you know, many of us have this funny understanding. That because I'm serving God, one day, great men will call me. Start reading your Bible very carefully. And you will find out that no great man appeared before the king just like that. There was an ability that qualified him to stand before the king. I have a question. What will qualify you to stand before men who can honor you? And bring you into greatness. Are you getting my point? The reason why you may be insignificant as you think. Is because your ability has not brought you to a position of notoriety. Please hear, hear what I'm saying. All men are equal. But their graces and abilities separate them. And make certain things possible for others. Your ability, that anointing, that skill, that grace, that gift is what you will use to access favor with men. There are people today by the grace of God who have come to see me. And I know that if not for the grace of God, there is nothing I will have in exchange for the level of the honor of those people. Not at this level of my life. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are offices and places that I access today and bump into those people and I know the level of great men in themselves who cannot access those offices. The gift of a man can make room for him and bring him before great men. Your gift can add to your age. Your gift can qualify you where you do not qualify. And the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon. We must understand this then I will show you how God lifts people in the kingdom. 
Say in the name of Jesus. I have an ability. That will bring me before great men. Say it one more time. In the name of Jesus. I have an anointing. I have grace. I have an ability. That will bring me before great men. I have entered places today. That my father may never enter. Perhaps. I have entered places today. That with all humility. My contemporaries maybe may never enter their lifetime. Because of the gift of God. Look, when you possess this ability, they told Jesus, they said, all men seek for thee. All men, they will pay you for it. They will pay you in millions and think it's a privilege that they are honoring you. And you will be surprised. You're wondering, my goodness. But there is an ability. And because they need it, they will look for you. There are 7 billion people in the earth. But more than 90% of those people are looking for solutions. That's big business, brother. If you can become a solution provider, you become magnetic. See the darkness in Nigeria. Look, let me tell you. If you have a ministry that spits saliva on people's face and they get healed, spit it on 20 people and let them get healed and you will see the level of intelligent people who will come and stand for days waiting to be healed. Many of us do not know the level of darkness that is upon the earth. Please listen. The Spirit of God is moving in this place right now because I, I want to share something very powerful. There is an anointing you have that can bail you forever. There is an anointing. The ability that makes you to stand before kings. You will not be the one looking for them. The Gentiles will come not to you, to your light. That's what they want. Not you. If you think people come because they like you, there are many people who come for Koinonia not because they like me. Oh. You will be amazed to see how many people came to Jesus. King of the Jews, you are this and that. When it looked like Jesus' ministry was nose diving, they say, I beg, crucify him. Let his blood even be upon our head. Please listen. Let me just advise you. If you think you have a crowd or people love you because of you there are very few people in your lifetime who will love you because of your personality many people will love you because of what you carry are you getting my point see Baba Lama, there is this treasure in earthen vessels so that you will end some things in your life I will never be a failure in this life forever I know it. I know it. Rich men have problems that I can solve. Ah, yes. Yes. Great men have problems that I can solve. I cannot solve every problem. But brothers and sisters, there are problems I can solve. Now, watch this. Let me explain to you the equation, what I call the equation of greatness you will be so blessed just give me a few minutes and we'll pray now ecclesiastes 9 verse 1 media project it i love the lord when i did this study my heart dropped i said oh god i'm sorry for all the times that i kept blaming you for so many things ecclesiastes 9 11 verse 11 did i say one 11 please verse 11 everybody please read i returned and saw under the that the race is not to the swift nor the battle to the strong neither yet bread to the wise nor yet riches to men of understanding nor yet favor to men of skill 
this is the mystery we're about to discuss now everybody read it but time and chance i want to show you the mystery of greatness listen repeat this last clause again one to go time one more time but time and chance happens to who how many everybody now replace the word chance where are we now okay but time and chance replace the word chance with opportunity are you ready now one to read i want you to replace the word time with the word seasons are you ready now one to read but seasons and opportunities happen to them all but seasons like the hand of a clock it has been designed by the sovereign act of god that for every man upon the surface of the earth there is the turning of the hand of the clock and that one day time an opportunity will always happen to them. Ah. Holy Spirit. Time and chance. Did the Bible say it happens to some? Happens to everybody. That means there is a guarantee. Please listen. Somebody's deliverance is coming. There is a guarantee based on the word of God that a day must come if God is God. Where time and chance. You know how they do cooperative society. Five of us bring 20, 20,000. It's now your own turn. It's now your own turn. And I start smiling although it's not my turn because I know that my turn is coming for sure. And the Bible says time and chance. So in the equation of greatness, we are bringing the constant factors and then we work on the variables. We are doing a little mathematics here. Are you getting my point? It says time and chance. This one, no devil can stop it. No herbalist from your village. You don't need to pray about it. It said time. If you are under the sun, time and chance happen to them. Ah, I show you a mystery. Ah. so time that means a time will come in my life whether I'm prepared or not whether I pray for it or not whether I fast for it or not a time will come where the hand of God will navigate opportunities whether I see it or not is irrelevant God's justice must be done therefore the Bible for once us is a redeeming the time. Now that you know that a day will come, this is where a lot of people miss it. We keep focusing on looking at the day. The Bible says it will come. Remove that in the equation of your preparation for greatness and begin to focus on taking advantage of that day. It will come. The equation of greatness. Let's look at, um, okay. Greatness, therefore, in the kingdom comes by number one. God margin seasons and opportunities together. And then number two, you finding favor by securing that opportunity. I'm going to explain myself. Let me have somebody, please. Aaron, come. Hallelujah. Watch this. Let's assume this is spiritual timing. And according to God's justice system, okay, stand here, Aaron. Please, that this time is going to keep moving. Are you seeing it now? And that a day will come. It may take a long time, but that a day is going to come when it will come to Aaron and if Aaron misses on that opportunity it will keep moving again are you getting what I'm saying that's why if God wants to help you in life he restores years 
not what you lost yes he tries to bring back the time so that the mistake you made you can remedy it he never said i will restore the goods because they are not necessary once there is time and those seasons is somebody understanding what i'm saying now the problem with the body of christ is that we all sit down being distracted at looking at the clock and waiting for the day it gets to our turn rather than getting busy to sharpen that ability so that the day the time comes you will enter the presence of greatness once and never come out again forever every man in the scripture that became great waited for that kairos moment joseph was in the prison but he knew there is an ability to interpret dreams it's only a matter of time the brother sold him he said no problem pharaoh's wife lied that he wanted to rape her no problem they threw him in the prison but when the season comes that part of the equation is god that starts moving that's favor with god are you seeing that now god made it in such a way that the wine presser had to do something wrong to go to the prison so while he was in the prison the divine transaction started happening and the wine presser came out although the wine presser forgot about him but a day came let me tell you it does not take two days for you to enter greatness read the bible it always happened in one day there is always a day called one day he said john remained in the wilderness until his season of appearing there is, john was sharpening himself in the wilderness when the season came he came out and he completed his assignment one time jesus for 30 years was preparing for a season of three years 30 years read all the books knew all the law did everything and there was flawless victory within three and a half years so there are many of us sitting down looking at people's cars and say man i like this jeep goodness ah bmw this and that ford explorer 2014 limited edition look at that foolishness we are there claiming i claim it time and chance your turn is soon coming create an urgency sharpen the knife sharpen the anointing sharpen the healing anointing one day see let me tell you you may say there are many people the bible says in israel there were many widows but to none was the prophet sent god will send people specifically to you ah, and when you take advantage of that season that is it you are open to a dimension of grace i have studied almost every great ministry i admire and i found out that in the history of that ministry something always happened something happened at the kairos season and the men plunged into it with revelation and boom never to return again are you are you getting what i'm sharing with you Ah, I feel the anointing of the spirit. If you sit down and you are wondering, Kai, this house, one day we are coming. When will this come? No, no, no. You never see me bother. You insult yourself when you do that. Many young people here, our dream is car, right? Car, let me buy car. And you are trying to save. How much can you save for the car you want? I'm teaching you a higher law. Get out of all those, those, those ways of frustration and misery. That's why many people cannot give God glory. They suffer for everything in their life. Come and adopt the kingdom's way. There is a higher dimension. There is a higher way. Believe me. Look, let me tell you. I'm a businessman. I've read many business books. So don't you think I'm just talking nonsense? I know what I'm saying. Hallelujah. When that Kairos moment comes in your life, when it comes in your ministry, some people are snoring through the night. The time will pass. They wake up and an opportunity that took 10 years has just passed. 
before it will come back again the first son is graduating from the university he has not learned his lesson after 25 years it comes again prophecy comes in the name of jesus let restoration happen and by the mercy of god the time is reversed it comes again the same lack of preparation keeps bringing people down are you seeing why it takes more than receive it to walk in this realm you would thank me in the future for what i'm teaching you i'm teaching you the way to a superior life so that you stop blaming your parents and say if my father only accepted this job stupid man would have been out of this thing uh -uh, leave your father alone god is bringing you to a point i don't care what degree you graduated with i don't care there is a problem listen if you solve a millionaire's problem you have access to his millions it's as simple as that never be a failure in this life never so every time I spend in prayer I'm sharpening my giftings for that day a day will come when that season comes God will send a great man who can sow a seed of 100 million naira to koinonia the person will be dying of tuberculosis or something it's like that that's how it works there is always something you can exchange for. And God will make it in such a way that on the day he's coming, somebody will be bringing koinonia messages. That one is God's part of the equation. While that is happening, I'm praying in the secret place. Greater wisdom, oh God. You can sleep in the night and not know that that is the last time you will sleep in that realm. Hi. If Joseph knew... If Joseph knew, all the people in the prison would have cleaned his shoe and said, Oga, oh it is within your bail me. Imagine the guy that bought Joseph. When he was shaving Joseph, little did he know. He would have earned himself a position forever. Imagine those who were with the pre in the prison with Obas and John. The night he would come out. If they had known that he would just come out never to return, they would have said, Oga, oh sir, let's pray. Father, bless this man. So that at least he will remember them. Beware of people that you keep mocking and say you are not this. You can't speak English very well. You can't do this and that and that. Beware, let me tell you. You know why? Because if you are not, if you don't take time. Please look at me. Let's just focus. God is just doing this thing. If, if, you, are, if you don't pay attention, can I tell you the truth? A day will come. You will find out that the same person you saw today. You looked at her, said, Mary, what is there? You will open an office that you feel from for two weeks. There are people today who are angry with me. They are angry with me because there were times when we could access one another. And at those times, they could say a lot of things. Call me when they wanted. But I was doing something they were not doing. We were all laughing and joking. And today, because of the difficulty in reaching me, they pick offense. It's not my fault. I refuse to remain at that level. I intend to grow. Be nice to people today. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, for those of you who look at people in Koinonia, and when we say greet one another, you just turn. You don't know who you are turning. Time and chance. He may come from a poor family. He may have one ton sandals. But let me tell you, time, the word you are hearing is sharpening you for that time. A day will come. There is something God has put in you. This is the justice of God. This is why every man can be great. Time and chance happens to them all. The day it happened to our parents, they were not prepared. They were there talking about others, criticizing others and the clock passed. And it went to one drunkard who just got born again and saw the time, took advantage of it. And they said, ah, is this not the boy on campus that was drinking? He was drinking, but he did something with his opportunity. Now he's a billionaire. He's a pastor. He's advancing the kingdom. Let me tell you something that happened. In 2008, I believe, I was in Accra for a retreat and something happened. Hallelujah. No, I think 2007 or so. I was in Accra for a retreat praying and seeking the face of God for the things that he was going to do. 
and while I was praying my money had finished I had nothing not even to eat not even to pay for the hotel where I was having the retreat for that night I finished praying I was reading a book within the gates it's a divine revelation book when I read it, the Spirit of God just told me stroll around and I came out I started strolling I was walking like a fool time and chance I want to share with you testimonies now the Holy Ghost just said just keep walking I was walking like a fool I didn't know where I was going up to 25 minutes I was just walking the next thing I saw a signboard welcome to Accra City campus and the Holy Ghost said enter immediately I entered the first person I'll meet is the SRC president and the guy listen the guy looked at me and the moment he looked at me he said how are you sir when he shook me he just took his hand he said Jesus he said can you come to my office miracle number one listen listen true story I want to tell you I know what I'm saying I'm not just making noise when this guy brought me to the office we didn't speak more than five minutes he started shaking time and chance and they ordered a meal I first ate the meal and then we attended their fellowship I sat down quietly after they attended their just like the campus has Friday fellowship when they finished I went to his office watch this the moment I started talking I started talking at about two four we rounded up that meeting past nine. When we started talking, the university ESCO started coming to the office one by one. They would come. This one would fall under the anointing and remain there. It was in that place I inaugurated the prayer group that prayed for the campus in Accra. In that Accra city campus. On that day, I'm still in touch with that gentleman. Again, his life changed. There was, they have their prophets like their maybe what you would call an FCS president yes after the, the the president would finish he invited me again to Accra and I went to minister in a program and it was a powerful and explosive program I was even on radio the radio and they did an interview I think that was when we traveled with Bala Alex and a team of other people listen that's not the whole story when I finished that night the people came together past nine they raised an offering of maybe equivalent in Naira now of maybe 30,000 and they gave me I didn't even know how to find my way back they directed me I found my way paid for that night and I ate a very good meal I said it works I remember in the room I was screaming I said come on not it has equal value in any land you don't need to know nobody all this Godfather nonsense let me tell you get out of it right now if God is on your side there is nothing, nothing you cannot get. Listen, the night I was supposed to leave, those guys started crying because they would come and visit me in my hotel. It was within three or four days, their lives changed. They said, what sort of person? I taught them on the kingdom. It was an unusual open heavens. So the last day they invited me again, I prayed with them, strengthened all the people, you know, bless them they had impartations and all of that and they raised me money again an equivalent of maybe say fifty thousand and then i returned back who would have helped me i don't have any uncle but the gift of a man the time and chance is god's own equation leave it for him god is speaking to someone tonight you have been crying and say lord when will it come god said forget about the issue of when are you prepared are you seeing that God delaying seasons is an act of his love. That thing you have been calling delay. You are not prepared. If it had come before this message, you would have blown it only for it to come back 10 years. You open a shop. Nobody's coming. God is saying, uh -uh, I don't want you to miss. Be careful what you call delay. Some things may be the hand of God. Your job, you didn't get the job. God said, I, I don't want you to struggle. There is something you can know. You go for a job in four months. You have become one of the executives. It does not take time. If you can solve the problem, you will rise to the top. All the days of my appointed time, I will wait. But while I wait, I will sharpen the knife. I will pray in tongues. While I wait, I will keep studying the word. 
I know I'm going to stand before kings. I must have contents to give them. I won't talk like I'm talking before weak men. I will stand before presidents. A day will come. It will be a privilege to air koinonia. A day will come. We will not just have one or two TV stations. There will be many. One billionaire can sponsor it for years. But while that time comes, we will pray. We will fast. We will travel. Let them call you a fool because there is no car. What is car? See, a man came to Mike Murdoch because of something that he did. He was begging Mike Murdoch to buy a car for him. Mike Murdoch said, I don't need it. He said, I, I entered a covenant with God that every year till you die, I will be buying you the latest Benz car. One day I was passing around Abuja and I saw all the mighty houses they were building around my Tama and the Holy Ghost told me, do you know how many of your houses are here? No, I'm serious. God told me, he said, you will only build in life just for the formality, the gift of a man. The owner of that building will need me one day. Darkness is a mystery that announces light. The world will be too dark. One day, they will need the anointing. They will need it. I'm telling you, many of you have not been respecting what you carry. I know what I carry. I know what I carry. It's an anointing of the spirit. The nations can never, 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 they can never deny the effect. They may not like me, but there is an anointing. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time, I'm fasting, I may be lean, I may so carry, but there is an anointing. My father could not enter, but there is an anointing. There is wisdom. There is the gift of God. And I will increase your greatness and comfort you on every side. There is a price to pay. I don't blame anybody. Left now is to sharpen my ability. Hiya. I may not speak the kind of English you want. But when I say it, an anointing will leave. You can deny my English. But you cannot deny the anointing. There is something. See, this is what I'm training you to become. There is a sharpening. You may not see it now. The world will need you. You will collect a salary of maybe 100,000 but your boss will sow a seed of 5 million to get out of trouble your ability listen we are soon going to pray your ability to maximize the moment opens you up to untold realms of greatness look at me Aaron is here. Let me share with you his testimony. Permit me Aaron a bit. For years, many of you know how skilled Aaron is. For years, the kind of job he was trusting God for would not come. I know times when things would get a bit painful for him. And we kept encouraging. He will be listening to the word of God. But time and chance... A season just came brothers and sisters supernaturally he got a job two he got connected with the deputy governor of Kaduna state within how many months Aaron that they, within two months they moved him to go and head a unit in just now he heads a unit in just and we're only counting see I think there's one of our ladies here two of our ladies that I know the moment they graduated they've not even served they just call them to get jobs you may not value what you are receiving don't let anybody fool you and make you think you are wasting your time a day will come the price you are paying now is what your colleagues will be paying in the future you are already paying it now you may look like a fool some of you as you are going back home now they will insult you and say we are not seeing the fruit it does not yet appear but time and chance will reveal that I'm not praying in tongues for nothing. Hallelujah. This year, let me give you the last story and then we'll pray. This year, I was in Ibadan. We, were, we all went to Ibadan. And when we went, they lodged us in one of the best hotels there. 
and it was Yerima, Victor, and um, Sam. They sent me a text in the afternoon. They said we are swimming and we are enjoying. And then I looked through my window. They were playing table tennis. They were swimming. You know, they were enjoying themselves. All snapping and enjoying. And I looked. And then I remembered the story. That same hotel, listen. In 2007, I went to that same hotel for something. But I could not pay for any room. Because it was very expensive. Listen to me. I still had the anointing. But time and season had not come. I went there. I still saw the arrangement. I sat down there. There's the reception there. Brothers and sisters, I was looking for a place around that vicinity where they were doing night vigil. It was a Friday night. So I will attend the night vigil because I had no money. If I touch anything, I will not have my transport back. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That same hotel. Somebody would have looked at me and said, Oh, what failure. Hiya mistake big mistake you don't need to respond to those who think you are failures because you went to the board and you saw five carryovers and the devil says see tell him no you see just keep watching time 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 yes you may have an extra year write it and move and thank god because in that extra year you are still moving ahead see if a plane is moving forward even if you go back to the restroom, you are still moving forward because the plane carrying you is moving forward. I stayed that night till morning. No bathing, no nothing. And a few years later, there is a protocol of people together with the wife of the police commissioner of the state. We came and we sat with this woman. We are still going back. I think some sometime towards the year we are still going back to our place again this woman was astonished the things that god did in in Ibadan was amazing the woman followed us to our hotel room and we kept talking till almost i think to 12 or past 12 and she brought she said she must show her husband her husband is one of the top police people praise god and she they recorded everything me prophesying and praying for her and she said she must meet her husband and she just brought out a check i think a check of thirty thousand or something she said sorry oh man of god this is small but can you take this i said oh lord time and chance it's not like i prayed more i just kept doing what i was doing it when when your season comes the same thing you did that did not produce result will now produce amazing results there are miracles that happen in Koinonia here that if we were on air, people will already start traveling. But time and chance. Don't worry, a day will come. Stop trying to announce yourself. There are many people on air getting millions of naira. They don't have up to half of Sam's anointing. Continue what you are doing. Time and chance. A day will come. God will arrange your destiny helpers in front. Then they will give you 10 minutes to lead prayers. That's the day God will announce you. In 10 minutes, what the Spirit of God will do, you will have more than 20 invitations. Come for our conference. Come for this. You are reading business books. You are preparing yourself. It looks like you're a fool. There's nothing working. No office. Only knowledge. People even call you big head. Don't worry. A day will come. Unto none of the widows was... was um was elijah how did he put it now was the prophet sent except that widow of Zarephath. but the question god is asking you tonight before we pray when the season comes when the season comes are you sharpened enough to make that your last season in that realm will you make the words of your critics become a self-fulfilling prophecy or will you contend? They may be seeing the brother and sister praying. And they say, hey, you people know what you are doing. Don't worry. You don't need to answer anybody. Just keep praying. Aya. Seasons. A day came we were doing this same thing. But it was at the back of chapel. No Facebook to capture the picture and show the world. 
that there is the hand of God upon these people. But the day will come. So I stop focusing about cars, nonsense, house. No. Leave all those things from today I'm teaching you. When you sit with friends and they say, oh boy, where now? Where will our level change? Just know that they are wasting your time. Time and chance. It never announces to you that the day is coming. You will just sleep in the prison one night. And by the second night, you are in a palace you cannot account for. What brought me here? Oh, I believe it for somebody. I believe it for somebody. Let me bring a word for somebody. You may be going through certain things. You are killing the lion in the secret. Nobody knows. You are killing the bear. Nobody knows. A day will come. God will put you in front of Goliath. And it will be in the presence of all Israel. On that day, Saul will know that there is a David. Some of you have anointings today. That if it is to be revealed, the world will run away. Don't look for premature manifestation. Let me tell you, service is the best way to train yourself and sharpen yourself. You see, all these things people say, I won't play keyboard till they pay me. You are being foolish. You can serve now and they give you prayers and you make blunders. At least the mistake was made in Jerusalem. Before you now get to Judea and Samaria and make blunders there. Make the mistake here. Sing and go off key here. We will laugh at you alone and we'll tap your back. There are mistakes that great men don't make in the open. No. Make it here. Make it here. Sharpen that knife. Who is God speaking to tonight? Because I sense in my spirit that we are at the edge. I cannot tell you. Trust me. I'm not speaking nonsense. I know it in my spirit. I've been telling you this for days. I have been fasting and preparing for these seasons. I have, I have picked the signal that believers in this side of God's kingdom, there is a dimension of, there is a shofar that will blow in this season. And let me tell you, warriors will arise. This, I call it the Zaria experience. We will reproduce this thing in this country. Many people do not know what God is doing in this side of the kingdom. You just finish your school. Wear your convocation gown. Or sit back. A day will come. God will say your season in Zaria is over. It's time to move. Like arrows. Like arrows in a man's quiver. He will send you. You will wreak havoc across the seven mountains. That day will come. Pay the price now. Forget the name. You don't need to be called an apostle or pastor or prophet. It's irrelevant. Settle down. Hallelujah. That's why, see, listen. Let me tell you one secret about my life. I shared it with the school of ministry students. You never see me in broad daylight just roaming around foolishly. No. If you see me around, there was something to do. You never, that you are walking on the street, you just see me jumping around and say, yeah, corn or maize, which one is hot? No. I'm preparing for such an extraordinary life. I want my life to match the visions that I've seen in the spirit. Call me apostle. Thank God for the healings. I won't be deceived. I want to carry the word of the Lord with such a razor sharp accuracy. So I will stay in the presence. I will fast. I will pray. Let me be lean today. No problem. It doesn't kill. It doesn't kill. Prayer doesn't kill. Don't be a fool. The suffering of the future is what kills. The price today doesn't kill. There's no job. Instead of praying and lamenting, be preparing. And say, I know a job will come. The day they do that interview, they won't just give a job. They will promote me at once. Because they will say, where have you been? Rise up on your feet. My spirit is fired up. Please jump up on your feet. I'd like you to begin to blast in tongues. Instrumentalists, come up. Everybody, come on. From the depth of your spirit. Sing. 
Do it for your future. Time and chance happens to you. A day will come. Your season of appearing. Your season of appearing. Don't be tired. Don't be tired. Man of God. Don't be tired. Woman of God. Don't be tired. Prophet of God. Don't be tired. Apostle of God. Don't be tired. Keep pressing. Sharpen the anointing. Sharpen the skill. Sharpen the gift. My season of appearing is coming. They may victimize me today, but time and chance, time and chance, time and chance. Hallelujah. 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 The next prayer point. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, I receive the capacity to build. Listen. If you can't just pair yourselves into two, find a brother or sister that is ready to pray and say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I receive grace to build, to sharpen that ability. As I wait for that day, come on, pray, Koinonia. Shake a poco to break a day. Shake a poco to break a day. The day will come. The day will come. Record to poco to break a day. Record to stop a day. And make a poco to break a day. Report to break a day. Get a motion. Listen, listen, 
the third prayer point you're going to attack every spirit listen of premature manifestation and distraction many of us want to be known it's not fair i'm anointed give me prayers to pray i'm anointed put me on the stage nonsense stephen remained here serving tables but the anointing was too much for tables you are going to pray listen there are many of us you cannot delay gratification you want to buy the shoe now you want to buy everything now you see people standing and you say i must buy this kind of shoe i must buy this kind of watch oh glory the word is working you better keep quiet and pray prepare for the season read the books read books on fatherhood read books on leadership read books on ministry sharpen yourself when you are tired and it's 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock time to pray when you are tired remember your destiny drag yourself up I'm tired it's true that I'm tired but for the sake of my destiny I do it to correct the errors of the fathers. I do it to correct the limitations of my fathers. Hallelujah. 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 Listen. Anytime you see a nice Jeep, go and get a book and read. That's how to that's how to claim it. After you speak and say in the name of Jesus, but prepare, knowing that there is something you can have that will bring it to you a day will come when God permits us and we start translating koinonia messages to books I tell you some of them will be bestsellers but until that time comes let's keep preaching the cutting edge messages hallelujah two more prayer points and we're done listen immediately we play these two prayer points there are people here who need to surrender totally to Jesus the moment we pray those two prayer points as we round up the last one I just want you to come out here quickly because this is serious business I don't need to cajole you you need to surrender your heart that you want to say Lord truly everything so make sure when that time comes we are going to pray we are going to pray these prayer points hallelujah and you're going to say lord all the resources all the materials all the components i need to expose myself to in preparation for that season bring them to me in the name of jesus lift your voice and pray all the trainings all the books all the papers all the catering schools, all the fashion schools, all the business schools, all the business schools, all the ministry training, all the degrees you need to get. All the qualifications, all the leadership traits that you need for this new season that is coming, receive grace, pay the price, find the truth. Hallelujah. 
So sister, she rather than praying and say, there's no husband, why don't you sharpen yourself? And say, the man that talks to me will know he spoke to a treasure. When you are going around doing all kinds of nonsense, there's no man coming. This coin on your brother said they are not seen. Why don't you sharpen yourself? Brothers, rather than sitting now, all these ladies don't like me. Are you serious? What are you doing for your future? Show me the investments you are making to be an extraordinary man. Last prayer point. Lord Jesus, hold my hands in this destiny and take me until I become great. Lift your voice and pray. Hold my hands. Hold my hands. Through the rain. Through the storm. Lord, when I want to give up, encourage me. When the pressure gets too much, let me hear the voice of the Spirit. Hold my hands. The hand of the Rubabel that began this war. That same hand. That same hand. Hold my hands. Hold my hands. When I'm almost giving up, hold my hands. When I'm almost falling, hold my hands. When it looks like the weight is too long, hold my hands. When I'm about to give up on destiny, hold my hands. When the husband is not coming, hold my hands. When the job is not coming, hold my hands. When the miracle seems to be delayed, hold my hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can choose to remain at the level you are forever by giving excuses or you can take the hand of God and say, Lord, I'm on your side. I don't care what men say. Let them criticize me. I'll still be moving. I don't care where they may misunderstand me. Why are you always praying in tongues like a fool? No problem. Is it only books you will keep reading? Don't you visit friends? No problem. When the season of appearing comes, the brothers of Joseph that looked down on him, they were the ones who now came. Joseph said, I saw the sun. I saw the moon. I saw 11 stars bowing to me. Those who criticize you, they will bow. It's only a matter of time. Hallelujah. I bring a word of hope to somebody. The issue in your life right now does not come to kill you. It is the making of great men. There is no money in your pocket. Some of you have been preached to think that it's because you don't have faith. It's because you have faith. Every time you pray for the throne, a Goliath comes. When you see a Goliath, don't cry, start smiling. That's a sign that a new season is before you. The presence of an enemy always ends your current season and opens up a new season for you. If there are no enemies in your life, I'm afraid of you. May your life not be so ordinary that your enemies ignore you. remember this day a day will come when you look at these pictures today tears will roll from your eyes because you will see that in a short time God has glorified himself in your life and you will be wondering was it this easy and I was almost missing it the songwriter says I was right at the edge of a breakthrough 
can I tell you something I sense in my spirit that the clock is getting close to someone's life I, I mean it from the depths of my heart as a house I know that we're about entering a season I've been announcing this for months God will not do anything in this house and not reveal it to me I'm like a pregnant woman that's why I stay in the secret like the wise men looking at the stars trying to understand what are you saying because a season will be better and we will only see and wonder and say Lord was it this fast hallelujah we'll take one more prayer point but let's allow those who are saying Lord I'm not going to lie to myself tonight I need you in my life please I want you to rush out here quickly do it from the depths of your heart whether you are outside or inside please welcome you are welcome this is for the sake of your destiny mean it from the depths of your heart enough is enough run to Jesus there's nothing to be ashamed of nobody is closing his eyes you don't close your eyes when they are giving you a gift there are still people outside Jesus is talking to you and saying this is why I brought you for this meeting you wanted to come but the devil kept stopping you but tonight is your night you can go back nobody will talk to you but you are the one who knows that your destiny needs to change don't let the proclamations of your enemies be a self-fulfilling prophecy run to Jesus young and old those of us standing stretch your hands towards them and begin to pray those in front talk to the Lord talk to the Lord some of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears say Lord I mean business with you I'm not being emotional because of a message I have seen that my destiny is in my hands I make up my mind I congratulate those of you in front no man condemns you condemnation does not come from God he convicts you like he has done I don't care what you have done I don't care where you are Jesus is about to give you a new beginning we believe in you and we believe in your destiny every one of us had to make this decision there's nothing to be ashamed of make it a genuine decision now lift your right hand and say after me from the depth of your heart say after me Lord Jesus I believe in you I confess that you are my savior and you are my Lord today I receive eternal life into my spirit I declare that I'm a child of God Satan stay out of my life Jesus I acknowledge you as the Lord of my life let the peace of God flood into my heart right now I denounce sin I denounce Satan from today my life begins to move upward only in the name of Jesus Christ now let me pray for you Jesus these ones have come because they love you we salute their courage and as a family of faith we receive them with gladness and Lord I know that among these ones there are apostles and prophets and businessmen and leaders and world changers Lord I pray that in this season you begin to lead them through dealings begin to bring them to the knowledge of the principles of the kingdom Holy Spirit you are our master mentor we commend these ones to your life let them experience it truly the Zoe life that God life in the name of Jesus Christ we bless you with the blessings of heaven everything that you came here with that is not of God drops here tonight and never returns with you in the name of Jesus you will be transformed and changed for real and you will never I break associations that are ungodly that keep you in sin and iniquity 
I pray in the name of Jesus that your change and transformation will be genuine. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Koinonia, celebrate them. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. Hallelujah. Now listen, just do something for me very quickly. I'd like you to follow the gentleman waving his hands. We'll have your details. We'll be praying for you. And then we'll have a word with you. God bless you. Celebrate them, Koinonia. Hallelujah. Please keep standing. Just give me a few minutes. And then we'll release the blessings on you. Hallelujah. Please use this week. Hallelujah. Jordan's bookstore is there. I want you to settle down on books and materials this week. Hallelujah. This week from now till next week Friday. Don't be distracted. I know that many of us are free. Some of us who are working when you come back from your office. Just quietly settle down. Please get materials. Some of us is, is gluttony that will kill away our destiny. You just eat and sleep and snore around. The Bible says a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the eyes and poverty will come upon you like an armed bandit. Go and get books, get tapes. Media is here. Immediately after Koinonia, you can meet them. Get as many Koinonia messages. We have preached messages across different areas. Is it marriage? Is it ministry? Get this koinonia teaching. Settle down. Close yourself. Even if it's for two hours. Hallelujah. Try to sleep well in the night. Once it's 12 or 1 o'clock. Find a place. Don't disturb people. Please. Don't disturb your neighbors because you are getting spiritual. Find a place. And pray. Even if it's for 30 minutes. Don't say you must pray for 5 hours. Pray in tongues. Write your persuasions. Those of you who have access to internet, go on YouTube. Download or listen to quality messages. Minimize watching movies. The television is good, but it can be a disadvantage sometimes. That's why those who watch it too much never appear there. Hallelujah. There are those who make news. There are those who watch the news. Hallelujah. Make up your mind. Use this week. Flog it out with destiny. Some of you need to break up godly associations. You love God, but you have too many friends. And many of them are not godly. When, when you want to bless God, some ladies will just come. Right, sister? And suggest all kinds of nonsense. Association is not compulsory. Are you getting my point? If there are friends that are leading you, they bring all kinds of poisonous movies. They come with wrong communication, evil communication. Mention all kinds of words that should not be heard among believers. You don't need to criticize them. But I tell you, friends that will not take you far. Abraham took Lot with him. It was because of Lot he almost missed out. You need to create a protocol around your life. Don't let anybody hop in and out of your life anyhow. Because you are going somewhere. They may not understand it now. Stop running to uncles and aunties. Being a nuisance to people's houses. Please give me money. You now lie to this person. My school fees is 30,000. Or oh, uncle give me the job. Auntie give me this. No. Settle down with the world. And they are the ones who will be celebrating you tomorrow. Hallelujah. Very quickly before we leave. If tonight is your first time worshiping with us here in Koinonia, while I take the announcements, please listen to the announcements. They are very important. I'd like you to find your way to the front. If this is your first time, please don't sit back. We have a prayer, a blessing, and a prophecy. Summon the courage to come out. We love you. We love you. Thank you, mommy. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Please don't sit back. I know there are a number of people outside. If you came with anybody and is sitting back, tell him, come, come and receive the blessing. Come and receive a prophetic word. Dearly beloved, 
I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The face of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.